This is a podcast from the Movie Pod Squad Network. For more shows like this, visit moviepodsquad.com. Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. Let's start the show. to Super Movie Brothers, episode 47. I'm your host, Super Movie Brother Dave. I'm your host, Super Movie Brother Jay. Jay. Yes, sir. We are really close to the anniversary, man. Oh, my goodness. We are recording it on June 19th. That's two weeks away, man. We're recording it. We got... Can't wait. We got a fun show for that one planned. We are going to have... I talked about this a little bit last week, but now I've, I've got it. I've got it all figured out. We are going to have John from Now in Technicolor and Nick from Epic Film Guys on. We're going to play... Never Have I Liked It. It's basically a version of Never Have I Ever. We're going to sit in a panel. It's going to be four of us. One of us will take turns round robin style. One of us will mention a movie we absolutely hate, even if it's well received. And people, if they like it, they're going to have to drink. So we're going to be picking bad movies. And if you like that bad movie, you're going to have to drink. And then there's going to be a point system. First person to five points. So you want to pick a, a movie that you don't like, <laughs> but you think other people like. That's it. Yeah. That's essentially That's it. it. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's easy. <laughs> and that'll be fun to do. It'll be fun. It'll be fun because we get yeah. to talk about and we get to bash movies a little bit. We get to bash each other a little bit. It'll be some. It'll be fun. And we're gonna have a very special beer segment on the anniversary because we did the Movie Pod Squad beer exchange. So you're actually going to be getting two beer reviews from other podcasts as well. So in the beer exchange that we did. So in the beer exchange, you're going to be getting beer reviews from John from Now in Technicolor. Brian from Bud's Beers and Brutality, Chris from More Gooder Than, Nick from Epic Film Guys, and Wes from Via VHS. Each one of them got got beers from from another Movie Pod Squad host, and they are going to be reviewing two of those beers that they got. And they're going to be sending me the audio files. I'm going to be playing them on the show. So we're going to have a very extra long beer special. But Jay, well, me and you are also going to be reviewing beers as well because we are going to be getting beers from Wes from Via VHS. He was my exchange partner. Awesome. So we're going to be reviewing his beers on the show as well. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be a nice a nice collaborative effort for our anniversary show because it'll be one year since since me and you have been podcasting on this. Yeah, can't wait. Alright, Jay, what were you up to this week, man? Not too much other than going to a drag show at Broken Goblet Brewery on Saturday night. That was a lot of fun. Um, huge turnout. There was 18 contestants. Um, one main drag queen who was kind of running the show, and there was like three judges. And you go up and you do like kind of like a, a song and dance routine type of thing in drag. Why didn't you do it? I didn't really know much about it until like a week or so before. And you know, I've never. I don't think I've ever really been to an official drag show, but. An official drag show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, you see people. As, drag. A, as, as but the community of drag queens have all got together, yeah. and they're like, "This has a seal on it. This is an official drag show." It not, felt. It felt like one. Not those back alley dumpster fucking drag shows <laughs> exactly. that, that you're gonna see out there. This one has the drag queen seal of approval. Oh man, you it went was to one of those ones. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, some of our uh, local friends that go to our live Broken shows. Goblet and our live shows and some of the workers like Righteous, um, they all dressed up and they had their own little skit and that was a lot of fun and I will definitely go up there, I promise, and do some type of song and dance or skit um, oh my in god. drag I would be there next to film year. it. Oh my god, I'd be yeah. there to film it. I, pr- I promise I will do it next year. Can I pick your outfit out? Um, we'll see. I'm, and dr- I'm dressing you up like that. I'm not going to sing because I can't sing. I'm dressing I you up will, like, like Catwoman. F- fake sing and just dance to whatever. Um, it, that'll be funny. Uh, I mean, you it's not it. like a secret fetish, like secret desire I got to it. do. I got it. But I th- it I, is. I mean, no, no it it's is. definitely not. <laughs> it's definitely not. Um, but. <laughs> I got your seat. Got it's your seat. gonna be a lot of fun, I think. We're gonna put you in a ban- in a banana hammock thong. Oh Jesus! And, and wait, and we're <laughs> gonna and we're gonna put a white dress on you, and you're gonna sit in the middle of the stage, and you're gonna uh, smoke a cigarette, and I'm gonna be a detective. My gonna, family can gonna, never know about this. I'm though. gonna be asking you questions, <laughs> and you're gonna uncross your legs. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> oh shit! Uh, you're just gonna. We're just gonna... <laughs> 
And it's going to have Super Movie Brothers on my dick. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Just, just, just the SMB logo yeah. right there on your nutsack. <laughs> yeah, that... but no, it was, it was, it was a great time. It was a huge turnout. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. So, um, kudos to them. That was a lot of fun. That was a big surprise. And um, you know, other than that, just you know, got out there and watched Wonder Woman. And um, you know, I have a. A, a great movie to talk about in Jay's Indie Corner this week. Cool. And it's going to be one of the last Jay's Indie Corners for a while. Because we got a new segment for you that's going to be starting with the anniversary show as well. That's going to be fun. You guys are going to stay tuned for that one. Jay's All Nude Sexy Time Forum. <laughs> that's that's what that's what it's going to be called. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Jay's um, going to get to talk about his favorite sex scenes, his favorite nude scenes in film. And I'm going to have to come up with something for me to uh, for me to do. I, yeah. think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little bit I'm going to put you in each of those scenes. <laughs> you should. That would be perfect. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. But, um, yeah, I just finished up Bloodline Season 3. Actually, it was the series finale. Me too. And, you know, the final th- three episodes, I guess you can say, got really sloppy and messy. It. Fucking hated it. There was parts that I hated. There was parts that I kind of liked. Um, I thought some things were fitting, some things didn't make any sense. So, like, it was a little bit all over the place. Dude, that whole episode... But it's sad to kind of see that series go. I mean, it was fitting, it was time, you know, the way the story was going, you, you couldn't feel, see it go any farther. Didn't you it feel it got crazy. tired that every single person was having some sort of existential crisis? The mother was having visions. Well, it got exhausting. John yeah. was having visions. It, it uh, was crazy. Meg was having a mental breakdown. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, oh my, everyone yeah. is in the midst of some sort of, like, mental the, crisis. They're all mentally broken yeah I, I, and it, damaged people trying to it just, uphold their their legendary so-called rayburn name and 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 the inn that they live in on like this gorgeous place in fucking florida i Keys. had a perfect way for that to end for it to end and it was that there at some point throughout the season there is mention that that the inn is sinking into the is sinking into the ocean and in 10 years it probably won't be there I wanted there to be like a scene of the inn, like the very last shot. The inn is dilapidated. It's kind of like boarded up. It's clearly abandoned, and there, it's it's in the middle of a storm. And the ocean comes up and just starts like washing the inn away. I think that would have been like the kind of poetic. Right? Yeah, it would have yeah. been poetic it, instead of ending it the way they did, which I won't say. Because it's also cleaning the history right. of the the skank. No, of it's the, it's, of the it's, family it's name. washing the Rayburn stain. Yeah. away. Uh, and In the history. It's just and all the lies. Oh my God, all the lies. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it, I just I was really disappointed with how it ended. I really felt that. I, I would have rather seen something more well, like, and then they all died. <laughs> originally, they were the creators were trying to do five or six seasons. Now, I think they had plenty of time to know that this was the last season and wrap things up accordingly. Um, it is what it is. Certain characters just it just didn't it just didn't work. But either way, just started up House of Cards. I love how I love House of Cards on Netflix. It's I don't one watch of my that. favorites. I hate politics, but I love this fucking show. So go figure. And um, that's about it right now, man. Yeah, Wonder Woman's really the only film that I got to see this week. We had Logan, so I didn't really, I didn't really go out and do a whole lot. I did finish Bloodline season three. I also watched all of F for Family, which is the Bill Burr uh, comedy uh, cartoon. That's a Netflix original. I, I, I think it's hilarious. Um, I, I, it's, it's basically set in the 1970s. Uh, and it's basically about like this failing family. Like it's, it's, it, it's basically like, it kind of seems like it's Bill Burr's stories about his family, like growing up and stuff like that. But it's really, it's really funny. It, it curses a, a lot. Like it curses and there's rampant cocaine use. Like Ooh. it's, fu- it's, it's, it's a fun watch. I'm not going to say like it's, it's fantastic, but it's certainly better than like what family guy has become and stuff like that. So it's certainly more interesting than that. So I, I really enjoyed F for family. And then I started rewatching all of Silicon Valley. So I, I've been keeping current on the current season on HBO, uh, but Lauren Lauren hasn't really seen it uh, too much. So she's been she's been a good sport and watching the new season with me, laughing with me and stuff like that. But that show has so many callback jokes to things that happened in earlier seasons that she's decided to go back and rewatch it. So I've been rewatching that with her, and I and I, I love that. I, I love going back and watching something like this because it's so that show is so funny. Like Mike Judd has done like a fantastic job with that show, 
And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes from here because after this season, it's TJ Miller's last season on the show this season. So not, not hopefully you start slimming down. <laughs> He's looking not, kind of girthy now yeah. lately. Not that like Ehrlich is is a main character in the show, but he's he's definitely a point of comic relief of the show. Of of you know he's one of the funniest parts of it. So I'm, I'll be interested to see where they go with Silicon Valley after here. And that's really it, man. I really didn't I really didn't do a whole lot this a whole lot this weekend. We got some we got some interesting things going on in Tom Cruise world though. Mm. They just announced Top Gun two. Maverick. Maverick. Yeah. Uh, 54 years old he is i don't want this fucking movie (laughs) i do not want this movie and i guarantee you fans of this movie do not want this movie you know who wants this movie tom cruise wants this movie i'm not even sure if fucking jerry bruckheimer even wants this movie (laughs) And he was the producer of this movie way back when. Oh, my God. You know, he is just a guy who just doesn't know when to say when. You know, he just wants to get up there and do a big action movie again and fly yep. planes again because he's just how, that kind of you, guy. How do you like, put Iceman back come in Come on. This? How do you put Iceman back in Oh, it? my God. Who knows? Because Val Kilmer is bloated as shit. Well, he's going to obviously play. I don't know. I don't know. He won't get into a fight. This, movie is, sure. uh, this movie is just going to tarnish its original legacy i think in so many ways and if god i'm just really unhappy with this announcement and i just don't think that they're gonna unless they do something vastly different and really you know what it's just gonna suck (laughs) fuck this movie yeah i think this movie i think it's a terrible i i I am not happy about this at all i'm getting really sick of long this is not what we need dormant like like series, it's not a cinema series. It was had one film, long dormant series coming back with with a with a sequel for only for it to to end up. I mean, it doesn't tarnish the original film because you can just ignore that the sequel happened. Believe me, I've been doing it with Crystal Skull know, for I years. Know, sure, it's okay. I just I just ignore the fact that Crystal Skull <laughs> exists and I could still watch the original three Indiana Jones yes, films and have fantastic yes. times with them. You can ignore that Jurassic Park three even exists and still have a good time because Colin Trevorrow certainly ignored Jurassic Park three when he was making when he was making Jurassic World. So, I understand. I know. I know. So I mean, I, does it need to come back? No. Is it going to make a ton of money? Yeah. People are going to go see it, Jay. We're going to review it on this show. We're going to go I see know. it. <laughs> You can sit here and lament and and, 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 and get Mark pissed Mark my off. words. I'm going to be hyped to shit for this movie when it comes out. You probably, probably, you're going to see the first trailer. I know. Like, We're going to do a trailer park. <laughs> they did a flyby. <laughs> oh, God. And they you, sing the song in the bar, just like they did in the first one. <laughs> you, you never know. You never know. I mean, well, look what just dropped today. Fucking American Made. That's what I was getting the, that the, next. The trailer. The American Made trailer. Um, with Tom Cruise in it. And my God, he's doing a lot of flying in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of that flying sequences are going to be real, um, that he's up there flying. Fueled by cocaine in that film, too. It looks like a lot of fun. We're going to, I mean, I'm just going to talk about it. We're not doing a trailer park this week, but the movie looks like a lot of fun. It looks like a blow remake, though. That's the problem with it. And the trailer showed too much of the whole fucking story. Jay, you ready? So you ready? You ready to have your pants shocked right off you? I don't like the movie Blow. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't like Blow. And when I went, was my solo trailer for American Made, I was like, meh, that's nothing for me. That's zero for me. I dig it. I, uh, I I've never. This is liked, right up my alley. This, I've never. This liked, is all good fun for me. I just never liked Blow. I never thought it was like that interesting of a story, like at, at all. It's weird. Even Think, though these are based on true stories and real matter. people and all that, like doesn't that doesn't matter. help. Like that always helps for me. No, um, no, it doesn't help for me because I because I Jay, I'm a guy who who loves fucking comic books. and oh, Star I know. Wars. I don't need things to 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 have happen. And the guy for who doesn't really... likes the real story yeah. stuff. <laughs> but the, the real Go story figure. stuff is faker than the fiction shit oh, that I like. I'm not gonna. Hey, look, I I, I hear you. I get it. I'm not gonna argue about that. But it still looks like a lot of fun. And, and you know, my God, Tom Cruise. I don't think I've ever seen him smile so much in a fucking trailer. Jesus Christ, he's constantly he's supposed in the to be good on cocaine mood. in it. I guess. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, I mean, th- I'm intrigued. This is this could be a really interesting performance from Tom Cruise that we haven't seen in a long time. I don't think Tom Cruise has interesting performances. I think Tom Cruise is just always the same character. We will see. Does American Made? I didn't even watch the trailer. You sent it to me, and I was like, I saw the first like 
30 seconds of it. I was like, nah, fuck that. Does he th- Does he have a running scene in that trailer? Is he running at all? There's got to be a scene where he's running. Because Tom Cruise is always running in every trailer. It's probably in his contract. If you don't believe um, me, I don't know. go watch like every trailer for Tom Cruise. He's always running. Even even Vanilla Sky, he's running. <laughs> in an empty Times Square that they spent a fortune yeah. on doing. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, he, he's running. He's always running. Yeah, I don't know. But either way, getting off subject, but Top Gun Maverick movie just does not need to be made. Period. <laughs> and that's it. Other interesting news. Uh, the Dark Universe has added a new actor to it, it seems. So we already knew that we had Russell Crowe. In talks. Have, it's not official yeah. yet. It's in We talks. have Tom Cruise uh, in, in The Mummy. Russell Crowe is playing Dr. Jekyll. He's going to be the glue that holds everything together. We're going to get into this a whole lot more in our final section of the show Johnny tonight. Depp is the Invisible Man. Johnny Depp's the Invisible Man. And now The Rock is gonna is, is in talks to be the Wolfman. So mm-hmm. if you ever needed to jazz up your franchise, who do you add? Yeah, The Rock. The Rock. <laughs> DCU has done it. <laughs> Dark Universe is going to do it. Fast and Furious has done it. Uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth was like, oh, man, Brendan Fraser doesn't want to come back. What do we do? Just had to rock. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's it's not... You know, I'm how, not like, crazy about this casting. I think it's a little too on the nose. I'd like to see somebody a little bit more weaker and scrawny and more interesting become the Wolfman. Yeah. But he's already, like, this big motherfucking guy. Like... You know, maybe he'll just be the know. wolf part of the wolf man and it'll be like some other guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So the, the way I the way I see it, like making a film, if making a film is like cooking and at the end it says and add a pinch of salt, like <laughs> movies now go add a pinch of the rock. <laughs> that's that's what we got to do now. It's like uh, salt and pepper to taste. You know what? Add a pinch of the rock and th- that'll round out our film franchise. Done. Well, you know, I mean, you know, I think The Rock needs a little bit more substance, though. I think it's a good move on his part, career-wise, to do a little, a little bit more of a risky property, a little bit more darker, a little bit more edgy, perhaps. Kind of stretch a little bit, you know. I don't think he's gonna want to get typecasted in all these little slapstick roles and um, action roles too much, because he is a little oversaturated right now. But he's either over- way, it's still working. I mean, I don't think he's oversaturated. You know, either, either, well, I mean, you know. Baywatch flopped. I mean, that that definitely did not make as much as they thought it was going to make. Everybody has bad films. It's not... No, I know. And, you know, that was a little surprising. I thought it was going to make a little bit more money because I thought the marketing was really well done, even though everybody could tell it was going to be a shit movie. I mean, it's just a stupid little fucking Baywatch comedy. But... I thought the trailers and the marketing did a fine enough job where they were going to pull in a little bit more money than whatever it made, like $22 million or People something. People love Central Intelligence, and that was that, that same type yeah, of movie. Yeah. So I don't think that was the rock that, that caused that movie to flop. It was definitely, it was definitely you know, the... It was, it was it was definitely just just the comedy of it and the fact that you know I, I would argue that Zac Efron is more of the reason why Baywatch flopped and less so The Rock. There's proof behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Zac Efron's not exactly like the hot ticket. He's anymore. not bankable. Yeah. All right. So coming up next, Jay has an indie film to review in Jay's indie corner. So he's gonna go pour himself a bourbon neat. And he's going to put on his suspenders, his square frame glasses. He's going to curl his mustache that he doesn't actually have. He'll grow one just for the segment, though. He'll grow it and he'll oh, shave it. Oh, I will. It. Yeah, and he'll shave it. He's also going to take his pants off and wear his banana hammock because he's just Because getting... it's hot as shit in his fucking room. Because no, he's getting ready for, for, for next year in the drag show. I'm filming every second of you in that drag show. <laughs> oh, Can I build you a birthday cake that you come out and you just oh, go, Oh, my God. Uh, Happy birthday, Mr. President. Damn. That's Happy what I should do because it's gonna be short. I will fucking do that. To you. That's what I should do. You should, or I'll give you because it's so short, so I don't have to be up on stage for too long and I don't get too freaked out. And <laughs> or I can make I can you just a... seduce a cake or a person. That's right. You probably. No. <laughs> no, not me. I mean, we'll get Mike and, up there. You can you can seduce Mike. And. uh That'd be perfect. Yeah. Or maybe we. Uh, what we could do is. Oh my god. I could get you. Big- you should have seen these fucking stiletto boots that Righteous was wearing. He fell down three times. <laughs> they were so high. I would. I. I think I would make you a sequence dress, and I would get you long purple gloves. I'm gonna be eight foot tall that night. <laughs> and give you and, and give you a big like red wig. And you're gonna go out there, and you're gonna sing the Jessica Rabbit song from from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You just have to get like real breathy with it, and then at the very end, just say, 
I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. <laughs> <laughs> You'd win. You'd win. <laughs> All right, so stay tuned for Jay's Indie Corner. Welcome back to Jay's Indie Corner. Jay's got a little indie ditty that he wants to talk to all you about. Jay, what is your indie film? Lost in Translation. And I've already got myself the, the, the perfect synopsis for this. Bring it on. All right. Lost in Translation is a film that stars Dev Patel, Aziz Ansari, and Kumail Nagiani. It is a movie that is about a customer service call center in India. Okay. And it is a series of vignettes about people who call in for customer service. Now, now the main actors, they all speak English perfectly well, perfectly well. But the second they get on the phone with a customer, they put on the heavy, thick accent just to fuck with the people. And then you have a, a who's who's cast of the people who are calling in. So you got you got your big Hollywood stars, man. You got like, you know, you got Hugh Jackman. You got... Uh, Bill Murray. Like, we'll just have, like, fun people call in. It'll be, like, just these little vignettes. And they, they call in, and they talk to these people, and it's it's just all about the comedy of errors that occurs when you call into, like, a help center, and you can't understand the person. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's perfect. Yeah. It would, yeah. Be, it would be hilarious. And it's all called Lost in Translation, obviously. Because you know we're dealing with we're dealing with people from two two different societies, two different worlds, two different languages. There's a language barrier that's going on. Sure, and it's all done to hilarious effect. Jay, what's Lost in Translation really about? Okay, so this one is a 2003 film written and directed by Sofia Coppola. Obviously, I've seen this film. Yes, <laughs> as I think most. I hope most of you have seen, um, or at least I'm sure you've heard of, and if not. Go out and watch this movie. It is definitely one of my favorite movies. Revol- uh, re-revolutionized Bill Murray's career. Like, 100%. 100%. Definitely. And even Scarlett Johansson, I mean, this really put her on the map as well. Again, I think she was kind of a budding star at the time. And it definitely kind of shot her up again. and got her a little bit more noticed. And Giovanni and, Ribisi. Well, you know, he had a small little role and he, he was great in it as well as Anna Faris. And uh, playing a young starlet. You know, Sofia Coppola definitely really putting herself on the map as a strong and influential and really talented writer director. Yeah. Who is someone to always see. And she's experimental. So you never know what you're going to get. Like Mary Antoinette. I hate that movie. I hated it too. Um, but there is stuff in there to admire. Like she knows how to put on a visual feast for yeah. the eyes i mean it's a production values and the costumes were magnificent that's one of the um, things i loved about lost she's in very musical she knows how to put usually some good music in with the, mu- the movie but sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't the visuals were the best part of of lost in translation that and and bill murray's you know deadpan the entire time and the best part is like his deadpan like we might laugh at it but the fact, no one else is laughing at it because it's all it's all Japanese people. It's a completely right. different culture. They just don't get it. And like, that's, they just don't that's get the, him. Exactly. And, you know, it's interesting because Scarlett, you know, her character, she's married to Giovanni, Giovanni Ribisi. You know, he's a fashion celebrity photographer um, traveling to, to, uh, to Tokyo for this shoot. Bumps into Anna Faris. You know, she's a young starlet. You know, you just see these situational funny things that happen. And you kind of follow Scarlett Johansson's character you know she's kind of like a fish out of water in this scene and she's you know right out of college she's just trying to figure out her life what she wants to do but you want you want to have a lot of fun because this is a thing the whole point is that 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 bill murray is an actor from from the united states who goes over there to do this commercial for a japanese whiskey company suntory if you want to have a lot of fun go on the youtube and look up famous actors and their japanese commercials harrison ford has several arnold schwarzenegger has a ton and his are awesome like one of them just had arnold schwarzenegger's head just screaming like ah and then there's like laser beams bouncing out of his eyes and his head is just spinning like disembodied from his body it's just spinning it is fucking crazy like the the like the 
people go like these actors they go over there and they make a couple million dollars to do these commercials and they fly back they yeah. do it for two days it's 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 worth it i mean it's one of those things that's why these big actors do it it's because well that and it doesn't why not it, it doesn't, it's not tarnishing their right. name around it would in america it would tarnish their name right but it's not overseas is actually helping their brand if anything right um it's just a completely different market over there it, it's something that we can't really comprehend because it's completely different right and you know you know, her and Bill Murray are staying at the same hotel and they're both kind of lonely and they're both kind of depressed and they're both kind of just stumbling into each other in a situational way that's so casual and comfortable and they spark up these conversations that have substance to them and they just explore this city, you know, themselves. Now, I heard a rumor about this film. Before Bill Murray was cast, Al Pacino was apparently... Oh, God, no. Supposed to be in it. Now, could you imagine him doing that Satori commercial? No. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, yeah. You got to try it. Scar Joe. Got a great ass. <laughs> oh, my God. Legs go all the way up. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't see him doing what Bill Murray did in this movie. Bill Murray was perfect. Oh, my goodness. Take yeah. me to the strip club. Cocaine off a stripper's ass. I really don't even want to see Al Pacino in any movie anymore. Could you imagine Al Pacino whispering in her ear? You, it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been a, a mystery about what he said because he just would have basically shouted in her ear. <laughs> it would have been like and then slapped her in the ass and walked off. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my address. Meet me back in Hollywood. <gasps> see you around, Scarjo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you you definitely would not explore you know the joys of life in a new place with a new friend if you were with Al Pacino. <laughs> I would enjoy being with Al Pacino. With Bill Murray, yes. But not so much Al Pacino. Yeah. <laughs> I used to bang Kim Basinger. <laughs> Batman touched her. <laughs> oh my god! She's got a great ass. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, so this is definitely one of my favorite movies. I mean, I just adore it. I really do. And Dave, what do you think? I mean, no, this it's is, one of my. This is one of yours as well. Yeah, it's one of I my. Mean, it's one of my favorite like indie darlings. Yeah, uh, it's an it's a classic indie darling. That's really what it is. I mean, it's a small movie. I think I think you know the the movie the movie hangs on Bill Murray's depression so much. Like, and, and Bill Murray plays like this. He's this he's this guy who's just laughing through the pain. Like, you know, he's got a marriage that's failing. Yes. Uh, he's you know he's got a career that's basically failing. Yeah, he's kind of sleepwalking right. through his own management. And like he makes his, this he makes this friend with a young with a young woman who's who's at the start of her life and you know he's he's kind of seeing the end of his and he but they're both in like the same position where like you know right her life will get better his life can only get worse and so all they latches. have right now is time right in the same spot same location so why not be with each other you know during that time right and i like the Until way they that have it, to leave i like the way that it kind of like flirts with this line of of sexual attraction and and oh, yeah. and true friendship and, and, and like it that. worked perfectly and the best part is like you, you can see and I, I think it's purposeful in the script and it's purposeful like in the way that 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 bill murray acts that he is clearly attracted to her um of course he actually makes very small little right. winks and 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 lines but in there it's a complete mystery about whether she's attracted to him right um, it's you, you never really know whether whether it's it's you know a platonic relationship turning into something that could possibly be romantic, or whether it's just for her a completely platonic thing. There's one scene that I recall that it becomes a, a little bit um, noticeable as far as when the hooker is at his apartment and he doesn't remember. And she comes to his apartment and she kind of gets disgruntled when she walks in on that. And yeah, but that could also just be. The fact that I just ran into a hooker and that's that's kind of awkward in itself. <laughs> yeah, of, co well, of course. But um, Jay, if I went you know. if I went to your place and and there was just a hooker like getting dressed and I'm like, yeah, I'm, am I supposed to pretend not to see this? Should I be outraged? Probably not, but I'm gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Um, How could you pay her and not invite me, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> could have filmed the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand your anger for that, but uh, <laughs> um, but. Um, no, I, I th that's why that's my point. I think it really walked that line in a very, very subtle way, and it is a very subtle movie, so it was really fitting in that regard. And I think they did a hell of a job. I mean, the two of them really just marrying their performances and their characters in a very fitting way, yeah. and it, it was just perfectly well done. Um, 
and the music, of course, was fantastic. You know, one of my favorite sequences is just them sitting in this hallway, taking a break from karaoke with her with a pink wig. Um, they got the zebra print, like, wall-skinned yeah, thing that's in the what, background, I mean. the and they're just having a smoke them. break, you know? And it's just a quiet little scene where they just share a cigarette. The neon, they don't even speak. The it's neon amazing. techno-glow, like, look of, of the film. And, and it, it basically embodies Tokyo nightlife. Uh, so well and just the it's it's very visual it's very nice to look at um and every 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 shot is is perfectly framed so i really enjoyed that but jay i gotta know what do you think he whispers in her ear at the very end what do you personally think it is because it's left up to you to really decide um yeah i mean i i don't, I don't want to give like actual words away perhaps i mean i think i definitely heard what i think i did i did find out what it really was um, no, Bill Murray said it was nothing. He literally went, went to her ear and just went. Pss, 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 pss. There's no line in the script for what he said. There's no line. He no, just, I know there's no line, he, but he I think just, I think he said something. I think I heard. I don't know, but either way, um, I think it was just in regards of just keep doing what you're doing. You know, everything's going to be great. I know. Exactly. Reach out to me, or whatever. I know exactly um, what he said. He 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 went. He he walked up to her. And he just went, I had a really lovely time. It was a lot of fun hanging out to you. i got to get back to my real life now. And you're a pink-haired nobody living in Tokyo. Fuck you. And, and then he went, here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets, on, he gets on that plane and he flies away from Casablanca. I mean, Tokyo. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> No, I mean, then that, and that, oh, God. And, and then, yeah, and yeah, the ending. Thank you for mentioning that because I, I, I was almost forgetting to mention that aspect because i loved that ending i love the fact that you can't what if you hear it what if he whispered it doesn't matter his... how fucking loud you turn up the volume no, he you say cannot he doesn't pick say up on it yeah so it's perfect what if he like got real close in her ear and he just went oh if i was 20 years younger i would have tore it up <laughs> <laughs> keep you walking funny for three weeks <laughs> Oh, Jesus. He's looking at you, kid. All right, Al. <laughs> cool it. Cool it. <laughs> That's it for Jay's Indie Corner, everybody. Uh, Thanks yeah. for listening to us talk about Lost in Translation. Please go <laughs> check it out. Hit me up on Twitter or Facebook about it if you want to chit chat. It's one of Jay's favorite films. He's going to talk about it all day. He, he, yeah. he would talk about it. This would be the whole rest of the podcast if I let you. Well, and I, you know, another one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this is because um, Sofia Coppola's latest film, The Beguiled or the Beguiled or something like that. Beguiled. The, the, the Beguiled. Thank you. I don't, that even, got I don't a, even know nothing about it, but <laughs> I just, I, I just. I, uh, your English is far superior than mine. I'm just, I'm just lost in your translations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one nice that gets you. Segue. You're kind of like my Chewbacca oh to my tell God. everybody what you're saying. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah, got a lot of praise in Cannes in the Cannes Film Festival out in France lately. Um, over the She's last got a great weeks. Can. So, <laughs> look out for that movie for the rest of the year. I'm sure you're going to hear about it around award season. So, stay tuned for that later on in the year. So, and yeah. So coming up next, me and Jay got two beers from Maniunk Brewing Company. I'm going to be drinking their goes, and Jay is going to be drinking a pale ale. So stay tuned for that. Welcome back to the beer segment where me and Jay like to take two beers and give them our reviews. So this week we got two beers from Maniunk Brewing Company from the Maniunk neighborhood in Philadelphia. Surprisingly, you know, that we've been doing the show for almost a year now because that anniversary is looming ever close. But we, we haven't talked about Maniunk on the show. They're a smaller brewery, but, you know, Maniunk, it's a, it's a cool little town in, in Philadelphia. It is pretty cool. It's a, it's a yuppie neighborhood. Um, it's yeah. Not, it's not so much hipsterish like Fishtown is or anything like that. It's like that, a hybrid but, of both almost, yeah. you know? But it's like in a nice little hilly uh, town, and it's on the other side of Philly or other side of the river or something like that. No, it's... In, it's, it's, it's on the same side, but just it, yeah, around yeah. the corner. If you all get a map... And see where Maniunk is compared to Philly, you kind of probably know what we're talking about because it's right along the Delaware River. 
Um, it's a pretty cool town. It's a lot of fun to party in. There's a lot of good music bars. Yeah. And it's the complete opposite side of the city for us. So it's not a neighborhood yeah. that we're familiar with with going to because it's it's so goddamn far. You yeah. know, I, I, I remember going on a couple of dates uh, in Maniunk, like when I was in my internet dating days. And I remember like, oh, so far. It's like 45 minutes. Yeah. And if you don't score... You know that that's a long. That's a long drive back that's home. A long <laughs> drive home. And I did that one time, and it was terrible. Yeah. Ever since then, I was like, I will never do this again unless I have some place to crash or Someone somebody else, else drive, yeah. <laughs> so I can sleep in the car and wait. Yeah, because it's like it, the bars closes at two. You don't you don't just have to take one interstate to get home. You got to oh. take you got to take you know I seventy six to ninety five. Yeah. Well, actually, Route one to I seventy six to ninety five, and then ninety five to home. Unless you want to take the Roosevelt Boulevard Route one all oh, the way. Yeah, home you don't want that. And hit every red light on the way. And not just that, you know, you got the the chance of police. You got other drunk drivers <laughs> on the road. You know, <laughs> oh my god, it's terrible. But he's already pulled over. <laughs> he can't pull over any farther. <laughs> But we had two widely different beers uh, that we're reviewing tonight. Yeah, so the first one that I'm doing is the Cucumber Melon Goes Ale with sea salt. It's called the Belly Flop. It's 4% alcohol per volume. And if you're unfamiliar with Gozes, they're getting really popular. I mean... Sour beers are, are getting are getting very popular. I sound like I, I sound like an old man. It's just like, oh, that's what all the kids are drinking. But the really what what it goes is it's a, it's a wheat ale that is that was originally brewed in Gosler, Germany. So hence the name it goes. And this one is is brewed with English cucumbers and watermelon uh, with obviously sea salt in it. And it. You kind of get all those notes. You do, but in there, yeah, you do, and and I think it marries them pretty well. And I, I've had several gozes. I've had some sour beers. Not a fan. Like I really disliked them. So when I was at the craft beer store buying uh, buying some beers, I was I was lamenting about about gozes. How I just don't like them. Uh, I don't. I'm not into sour beers. And there's a whole sour beer section in there now. Like if you notice, there's a, there's a whole end cap dedicated to sour beers. Yeah, it's getting popular. So. Uh, so the woman that is that, that runs the counter where we go, she, you know, she said you should try this one. Uh, I, she's like, I hate gozes too, and I really enjoy that one. So I grabbed two. Um, technically, I grabbed three because one I sent down to via VHS to check out because he's not a big fan of anything dark or anything hoppy. So I had to find like all these like real nice light like in the middle beers and stuff like that that were I, I that I would think were interesting at least bold in flavor that I could send down to him. So I sent him one of these. So hopefully he enjoys it. I'm enjoying it. Lauren loved it. Uh, she she would probably drink a six pack of this. And Jay, for you, this is a light, fresh, thirst quenching <laughs> summer afternoon beer. <laughs> uh, on the rocks, would you drink it on ice? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I think it's fine how it is. Um, yeah, I really just I can't get in, I can't get on board with it. I don't oh, know what it is. I like it. I mean, I think it just doesn't hit me the right way. The cucumber balances out that sourness really, really well. You you definitely taste it like it tastes like you're I drinking cucumber I, I, water. I, I know, and it's I, good. I, I get it. It's it hits all the right notes of how yep. they describe. Um, you know, I I think it's a well crafted beer. Is just, I mean, it's a one in my book. Like I can't even. Do more than a few sips of it. Three and a half. Yeah, I'm bad. giving it a three and a half. I really, I really dig it. I, I think it's, I think it's very well balanced, man. That's, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, it's an, it's a wildly different beer that we usually do not review. Well, it's a, so it's pretty cool. It's to have a brew, it it's a brewery that we never talked about. I know. It's a type of beer we never talk about. We Pe- really should start talking about Maniac a little bit more. We should talk about beers that aren't IPAs a little bit more or barrel aged things. And that too. <laughs> But uh, I have myself the Maniac Side Piece American Style Pale Ale. It is 5.8 alcohol by volume. And Side Piece is the only reason to go to Maniac. Exactly. <laughs> um, this has a really great balance of like pine and citrus uh, notes with it. And, you know, on the nose, it's pretty mild and it has a little bit more of a citrusy kind of smell. And then. The taste, you know, you get a little bit of that pine up front, and then it finishes with the citrus, which is what I really like, and it's very, very drinkable. Um, I'm really liking this beer a lot. I mean, as far as 
like a go-to beer if i was in maniac like this would be my beer <laughs> i'm pretty sure and i would definitely grade this a four out of five wow i mean i i tried yours uh, i'm not blown away by it it's not it's not dry hopped enough for me it is a pale ale so it doesn't it doesn't have to be but i like mine extra pale you know yeah, no, and I don't, this, and is, I, this is perfect for me. And I don't mean like a like an American Pie Stifler <laughs> Pale Ale. <laughs> no, but I mean I I dig it a lot. I think it's I I, I think it, it it marries its its citrus and bitter flavors like really nicely. But it's just it's just not powerful enough for me. The the the, the flavor profile isn't isn't really enough. I feel like it, it kind of like played it safe a little bit. Yeah, I mean. Like I said, for me, like this is like a go-to beer that I would probably drink on the regular and have a bunch of in my fridge, and you know, have other experimental beers in the fridge. You know, what I'm saying like this would be a little bit more of a mainstay. Yeah, um, definitely like it. Really good. So coming up next, me and Jay are going to be talking about Universal's Dark Universe as they've had some promotional stuff come out for it. We know that that next week we're going to be reviewing The Mummy, but we're also going to be talking about the DCEU a little bit, you know, what what they have coming out next and whether Wonder Woman has has made a change in in any of that at all. And then we'll wrap it up with with talking about the MCU and really what the MCU has left and whether it has enough steam after Infinity War to to continue on. So it's just going to be a little bit of a free-form discussion for me and Jay. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. So me and Jay, you know, we're fresh off of seeing Wonder Woman. We did a review. That's going to be up live by the time you hear this. So make sure you go check that out. But me and Jay just want to kind of talk about, you know, all the franchises that are out there right now with their with their irons in the fire that are that are still going strong. Uh, so really, I want to talk about the DCEU and kind of like what we're looking at with the future there. And then I, I want to talk about this dark universe because we are very close to coming to the to, to coming to the premiere of the dark universe with The Mummy with Tom sure Cruise. Are. We'll be reviewing that next week. And then it's just kind of weird that, you know, the, the Marvel Universe is still going. And even though it's had no no real big missteps or anything like that, like nothing that really tripped it up too much. It still just kind of feels like that's like winding down little. What exactly do you think is winding down? I just feel like it's, it's had its time and it's, it's, it's time for it to end is really what I'm getting at. Like it's just time for it to come to an end. So we're going to get started with the DCEU and, and wonder woman off, off first. So wonder woman was breaking records, had a huge first week out. It's going to continue to steamroll. It, it's, it's probably going to be the highest grossing DCEU film to date. Probably. Yes. It, it, it had, far more positive reviews and everything like that we did we got into this a little bit during the review of wonder woman but i i kind of stopped it because i wanted to really bring it up here you know what what bearing does 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 this being a good film have on the rest of the dceu you kind of seem like it was it, it it really puts a it really means that the whole rest of the dceu can be lifted by it and i seem to think that it has really nothing to do with the rest of the DCEU. no I, I really do i think that really kind of helped wash a bit of the bad taste in a lot of people's mouths with the excessive hype that we got from last year with BVS and uh, Suicide Squad, you know? I mean, I really, really do. But here we and are. We... It's going to help push forward the momentum into Justice League later on in the year. 100%. I mean, now, I completely stand behind that. Our, our next film that, that comes for the DCEU is Justice League. It's going to be the third film by Zack Snyder. Now, Zack Snyder film slash... Joss Whedon? No, Joss he's Whedon. just he's just doing closing productions on it. He yeah, did, he but, did a couple but, reshoots. But th those are the it. fine tweaks that you never know. I mean, could do a lot of things. I mean, we are still a few months away, so I'm, there could be a lot of things that need to be worked I'm not on. In, yeah, I'm not entirely sure I'm just that's going to be a whole. I'm lot. I'm just saying, you never know. And either and, way, if, and if way, anybody that's going to go in on that, I'm cool with Josh. And 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 the way he came in. 
he he you know he didn't come in to like to like write the ship or fix anything they did that with with jeff johns when they brought him in as kind of like you know creative lead on everything now that would justice league will be the first film that's heavily influenced by jeff johns uh he had a little bit of input into wonder woman but mainly justice league is going to be where you have a whole lot of his creative stamp on it and he came from the comic book world he's been a, he's been a big dc writer for years but jo- having joss whedon come in he just came in to do post-production stuff because of the tragedy that happened happened with Zack Snyder where, where his 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 daughter you know took her own life she 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 was a victim of suicide so mm-hmm. I, I don't think that he's gonna want to step on too many people's toes given that situation I think he's just of really course, coming yeah. in doing like post-production stuff just 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 the nuts and bolts of everything just to get just this to movie out. right yeah I don't think it's gonna have too much bearing on yeah. on the overall on the overall look, feel, and story of Justice League at all. Now, Jeff Johns, I think, will have a huge thing to do with 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 the story and and at least the portrayal of the characters because that's what he was brought in to do. Okay, he was brought in to kind of like write that. Well, I mean, I think I think for one, as far as Aquaman, I think he's going to have a big, strong presence in this movie, not just because. Because he has the next film coming out after it. Exactly. Because they have the next film coming out, and they need to really establish this character. And I think he really pops on the screen. I mean, that latest trailer, he's all over it. And he has some pretty fucking cool scenes and some uh, some interesting little zingers on the dialogue with Batman. So, well, let's you know, talk about, we'll see how that goes. Let's talk about Aquaman a little bit. How- how do you feel knowing that? I'm actually optimistic now right? because I, I really am. It's yeah. directed by James Wan, and James Wan has done The Conjuring. Uh, he's done the Insidious films. He has been writers and producers on those. And as far as like his... No, my only concern is how he's going to handle the CGI. That is my only concern because this is obviously an extremely CGI film. Right. You know... How is that going to play? Like, are you going to make it look really fucking corny and bad? Or I mean, are you going to kind of try to make it a little bit... He's a horror film guy. Realistic. I mean, he came from... No, Saul. I know. That's why I like. I like that. I, I feel like it needs to be there. What because that's seen- literally what it is. Underwater, Dave, is there like... Like, is it fucking um, Finding Nemo when it's, like, all bright, light blue and, like, everyone's cheery and chippy whoa, whoa, and all this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, hey, hey, hey. it gets dark when they meet the, when they meet the okay. sharks. Don't but I'm, that. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's nothing but pitch black darkness under the fucking water. So, you know. I'm having fish tonight. <laughs> it's not Roy Bruce's fault. He never really knew his father. <laughs> So, don't, I know, I'm, I'm just fucking with you. fucking bash I'm Finding fucking, Nemo in I, front of me, you motherfucker. <laughs> finding I'm, Nemo has I'm, ten times more heart than any DC I'm just stirring your film. pot, David. I'm just stirring Ten pot. times more heart, you fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so but James Wan, he came from the horror world. Which yeah, is, I'm happy which is, with that. Which is, a, you know, I, I see that as kind of like a good thing. Because if you look at the, the at directors who have come from who have come from horror films, I'll, you know, a lot of great directors have come out of have come out of horror films. Uh, Peter Jackson really comes to mind a lot because he kind of came from like that horror world. And yeah. Sam Raimi did also to middling effect. I mean, he he really really knocked it out of the park with two Spider Man, and then really just shit the bed and hasn't really had much going on since. Oh, the old. And then he could try to go back after that and do Drag Me to Hell. Don't, don't, don't. I love Drag Me to Hell. Do you? Oh, my God, yeah. The physical comedy in that is great. It's everything that made Evil Dead great. Uh, you know, I only saw it one sto- time, so maybe I should revisit it's it. It's just the story was weaker, and it didn't have a main character like Ash to really pull you through it. I did have a crush on Allison Lohman. Yeah. So... But yeah, I'm 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 a little hopeful for Aquaman. Um, I, I'm kind of digging the portrayal that they're doing for Aquaman. But it's it's after Aquaman that that kind of really. This is one of the best casting choices, to be honest. I think. Well, they had to go a different direction because you couldn't. And do, this is the direction you couldn't they do. Have gone. Like this you is know, great. You yeah. couldn't do like a blonde haired guy again. Yeah. You couldn't do yeah. the Arthur Curry from the comics. They have to do something to set it apart because. You know, honestly, I mean, even though in in comics in recent years, Aquaman has really has really become an interesting character. Many people in general audiences see him as kind of a joke. So if you put him in that orange fish scaled outfit with with you know green green underwear on over top of it, he he would have been the butt of everyone's joke. So to make him look starkly different than he does, in and the it's comics, nice that in the trailer that Bruce Wayne even like makes right. a little funny joke about it. like I hear you talk to fish, you know. Like so the the, the first thing that they the, to do to make people realize that this is different than that Aquaman that you that you make fun of 
is to make him look completely different than the any Aquaman that anyone's ever seen. It's the first thing they can do to distance themselves from it. Uh, and then you have someone like Jason Momoa, who is obviously a huge physical presence. But as far as acting chops go, we haven't really seen a whole lot from him. If you watch the the TV series, I think it's called Red Road, where he where he plays a Native American living on a reservation. He just got out of prison and stuff like that. He has some decent acting chops in that show. So. I think he has it in him. I, yeah, from, so what, I. from what I've seen, I think he has it in him. I'm really curious to see how it plays in this movie as a whole. I mean, because I think there's going to be a lot of different kind of ranges that he's going to be having to hit. Not just with Mira, played by Amber Heard, but also the villain and the other fish and how he just interacts with other human beings and like i think there's gonna be a lot of things that he's gonna be playing with right, and now, also him getting drunk <laughs> now, here, now now here's where it gets fun. here's where it gets shaky because after aquaman which we're both kind of hopeful for we get shazam i have no comment on this property yeah i really don't i mean dwayne the rock johnson is a producer as well as he's going to be playing the main villain black adam we don't yet know who is playing shazam who's playing the 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 titular character we have no we have no clue as far as directors go we don't know but it's slated for april of 2019 so it's two years away and we don't have a whole lot on it so it, later this year we're gonna get a lot more maybe they haven't hired anybody it. yet or at least they haven't announced who, who it is yet it'll, it'll come it'll come but yeah i i really just have no Nothing to say about this property. And apparently, David F. Sandberg is set to be the director for it. That's that. That's that, that's just according to IMDb, and it's written by Henry Gaiden. Okay. And, and, and it has The Rock as the main bad guy as all Black Adam, right. and that's it. That's all we know. I'm not sure if Shazam is really like one of those ones that. I mean, the story of Shazam is that there's a, it's a little boy, Billy Batson. He's a ten year old boy. He gets imbued with the power of Shazam. Every time he says the word Shazam, a bolt of lightning hits him, and he becomes a fully grown, muscular superhero with powers similar to Superman's. But they're, they're, it's kind of powers that come from the gods. They, that come from, I believe it's Egyptian gods. And then there's Black Adam, who has the same power, but he, he's more corrupted. He he will allow himself to, to stay in his Shazam power longer uh and 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 the longer he stays that empowered the more the power corrupts him and stuff like yeah, that i think this kind of makes sense with him possibly going to the wolfman property in the monster universe we're not there yet jay we're not there yet i'm You're just saying ahead. i think he's trying to change his uh career path ever so slightly so we'll see yeah he plays he plays a a nice strong guy really well and i think seeing him as a villain he played a villain great when he was in WWE, you know? Uh, I, I, I could see him calling a 10-year-old kid a fucking jabroni. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen here, you jabroni. He can do no wrong. <laughs> but, I mean, that that has me, like, a little worried because it's, it's kind of like it's two years away and there's really nothing out there about it. I mean, we knew about BVS three years before that even came out. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. Let's just skip to the next universe. I mean, uh, well, I mean, then we got Cyborg, which has nothing announced for it, except for we know who the actor is. Yeah. Why is Cyborg getting his own film? Nobody wants. The Flash film has since been put on hold and everything at, like that. At this rate, you mentioned earlier in pre-production, you may as well just make it a Flash slash Cyborg I think that's exactly movie. what they're going I mean, to do. I think just, just do that. Neither one of the characters is really strong enough, I think, to really hold their own film. Uh, I think The Flash has a great TV series going right now. Unless you scale it down right. quite a bit, like right. an Ant-Man type of film. Uh, I, but I, I mean, The Flash. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to sell like his power because it comes from like this cosmic speed force. That's like it's it gets it to get into his origin it becomes a little too much. It gets it gets pretty yeah. gets pretty heavy. And then once you get into the Flash being able to time travel and stuff like that, whoa, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Sandworms. You hate them, right? <laughs> uh, it, it, it gets a little weird. But, and then Cyborg, his 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 origin is just really it's it's really out there. You know, it's 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 kind of like his origin is so heavily tied in with Dark Side that I think you you save you know uh, his solo movie. You you just don't really give him a solo movie. It's it's almost like the Justice League movies are like his solo movies because he he is so tied to the main bad guy of everything, Darkseid, because his powers come from a mother box that is 
basically Darkseid's weapon. And then finally, Green Lantern Corps in 2020 is what they have listed also. No clue what's going on there. Those rumors are really weird because mm. there's some rumors that Ryan Reynolds will be back as Hal Jordan, just a, a, a little older, and they're going to add in Jon Stewart. And the reason they're calling it Green Lantern Corps is because apparently they don't just want it to focus on one Green Lantern. Earth has many Green Lanterns. It's got Kyle Rayner. It's got Guy Gardner. It has Jon Stewart. It has Hal Jordan. So to just follow one of them isn't really doing the story justice. So what what they're going to do is follow the entire Green Lantern core and have them going up against somebody. And the reason that like the rumor was, was that um, Ryan Reynolds return is that they, there was that teaser at the end of Green Lantern. Yeah. The end credit scene was, you know, Mark Strong's Sinestro puts on the yellow ring Mm -hmm. and that's the main bad guy for, for how Jordan, yeah. No, I mean, I. And I feel like DCE. Honestly, is, I think if anything or anybody, Ryan Reynolds can do it. I think he was the worst. He was the worst part of the film, not because Ryan Reynolds is bad, just because he was not the right character to. He was not the right actor to play Hal Jordan. Hal Jordan's not that type of jokey type of guy. He's he's really not. That's more of like Kyle Rayner's role. Mm. I mean, the, my only thought is the DCEU look at that and go, you know what? We've already made several shitty films why not just bring that shitty film into this universe and then maybe who cares maybe, maybe. <laughs> obviously people can forgive and forget well it, it's a name it's a property and and you know some people like it i mean no. maybe the young kids do i don't know no but, no one likes it uh, <laughs> universally lampooned probably. yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and and it deserves its 10 lashings <laughs> And then, obviously, now with the success of Wonder Woman, Patty Jenkins has already been talking about the Wonder Woman sequel and stuff like that. Something tells me that'll get fast-tracked above all this, and that'll be our 2020 However, film. However, the only other movie property that is in, I guess, development stages, which is classic term for Hollywood of development hell, um, I Am Superman, Ryan Gosling, my boy. Yeah. What is that? Like, what the fuck is that? It, it's, it's, it's a completely different i think it's a drama it's a drama movie that she is trying to make no it's not gonna happen and i don't think that's gonna happen you're talking about patty jenkins right yes patty jenkins she's she's locked in now for she wrote it and directed it it's called i am superman it's a drama and it's uh you know two more wonder it's called a fighting pit bull finds itself on a strange and unexpected journey a journey that will ultimately decide its face Face it. I'm getting drunk. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, and it's supposed to start Ryan Gosling. So I don't. I don't it's know weird. exactly what the hell's going on with that. It's probably not going to happen unless she, no. like, literally demands to make this first before Wonder Woman two. Then it'd be fast tracked. That's true. But, but Ryan Gosling right now is in development. Damien Chazelle's Neil Armstrong film. Right. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. Either right. way, let's we'll change see. let's change gears to the dark universe now. So me and you are about to go see the Mummy. I am not interested in it at all, but I'm seeing it because I asked you whether you wanted to review it for the show or you wanted to do a top five mini so and you said no, absolutely review it. So you're obviously excited for it. I am. I'm 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 increasingly getting more and more excited by it. Whatever it is, the marketing, they're they're just hitting me. I I, I like what they're trying to do. Yes, I'm nervous, but I love the confidence. I love the confidence of this monsters universe, this dark universe that they're trying to do at Universal. And I'm all aboard. I'm, I'm all aboard. I am so not on board. I, don't I, even, I am. I'm, I don't get I'm the trying. vision. I know that they want it to be a lot like the originals. They want it to kind of feel black and white while not being black and white. They yeah. want to pay homage to the original Universal monsters. I get they what they're had. trying to do. And I think... I think, and it's not. And when we say universe, it's not going to be a universe where they all come together not for yet, one big film. Not yet, at least. Yeah. You know, it's, we'll it's see. all just kind of tied in. And right now, the glue that holds it together is Russell Crowe, who is working for right. for a, a, a company uh, that that keeps tabs on these monsters. Yeah. So uh, we're getting the Mummy coming out now. Yeah, they're they're being very patient with yeah. all their properties. And then after that it's The Bride of Frankenstein, which yes. has really just started casting. Well, it's confirmed that Javier Bardem is the Frankenstein monster and they're casting would you young Frankenstein. Would you dub that for me? Please. <laughs> 
and I think it, I think he's perfect in it. I, I mean, rumor is that Angelina Jolie is, is going to be the bride. Is supposed supposedly to be the bride. So we'll, I mean, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure. And then there's also we know that Johnny Depp is the Invisible Man. Yes, we that's don't confirmed. know he doesn't have a solo film, so we don't know what his role is really. I be. have a feeling that his movie would probably be after Young Frankenstein. Frankenstein is supposed to be uh, around Valentine's Day of 2019. So now here's here's the thing. That I mean, should be getting going soon i know that the universal movie monsters have a huge following out there i know people really dig those old they're old classics, classics. they're just old classics I now know, a lot of people our age don't know much about them it's 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 just not it's that i don't find it interesting in today's market i don't think many of these properties are bankable i'd in today's like to market. see it just kind of flip things on its head a little and, bit and that's many, what i want how many frankenstein movies do we need I've seen shit cheese ball versions. Yeah, I mean, there's. Been but I don't some... want a, ch- a shit cheese ball version. I want a good version. There's, and I feel like I the Rob- hope there's the Robert De Niro one. The yeah. with, and then there is. The... Oh, well, the latest was fucking um, Aaron Eckhart's, right? Uh, I Frankenstein. I Frankenstein. And oh. then there's then there was also there's kind of like Van Helsing. That's on another universe. Actually, there property. is supposed to be a Van Helsing character in this. And world then there at one was point. also the one with James McAvoy and Daniel Radcliffe that just came out last year, the year before that. I mean, I, it, because f- the story of Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, is public domain, anybody can make a Frankenstein movie at any time they want. And I'm not understanding The Mummy. Right. So so it, it, Tom Cruise is The Mummy? He's he's The Mummy because he got brought back to life? Or, no, like, what's, what's I, I think I have a And feeling... where does the creature from the Black Lagoon fit into any of this? Like, where does any of this yeah, come I... from? How do, you, how do you usher all this into the same universe? I think just... The Mummy brings back Tom Cruise to life as far as, like, a curse. So I think he might be, like, a version of, like, a cursed potential monster of sorts that's going to... What's his name in the film? Is his name Dorian Gray? Huh? Is, is I don't he, think it is. Is he cursed? I think if he looks at a portrait of himself, I does think he it's immediately Nick. die? I think it's Nick. Yeah, I'm just kidding, Jack. But I'm just kidding. But that's another either way. One. I don't know. I mean, that's what that's what I, that's what I'm so intrigued by. Here's what we I do. think there's a lot of unanswered questions out Here's there. Here's what we do. We scrap all this. Just scrap it all. And and someone just make a good version of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and then and then we'll all get our fix for all these movie monsters together doing shit. Or just mm. just just make the sequel to Monster Squad that everybody wants. Wolfman's got Nards. You know who I really want to see just direct this whole universe? David fucking Fincher. No, no, stop throwing him in everything. Stop. I love this Fincher, is not, and this is, this is the thing. kind of world. This is not his thing. I, I already love got a project his for darkness. him. Darkness. I already, I already got a project for him. I already told you. It's, I, I want. I want. Ridley Scott off of Alien, and I mm. want Fincher to reclaim Alien. I want him to come reclaim back and be, yeah, come back and be like, you know what? I'm cool with that too. I got fucked on Alien Three. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna knock this 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 last Alien film out of the park. And you bring Sweden back to write the script for it because his script got fucking chopped up and fucked up so bad in Alien Resurrection. You bring those two back as like some powerhouse that that would just dominate. I think. But I, Jay, I'm not sold in this monster universe. I I honestly think that Universal is 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 doing it rolling them out slowly and 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 trying to let them build steam because they want the ability to pull out if they need to yes i definitely believe that however but you say I think... you, but you say you love the confidence that they show how does that show confidence if you're if you're not confident enough to to that's, go balls to the that's wall that's just the release dates and their and their speed but i i think it's I think just they... that they want to make good films they don't want to rush things they want to make things I get the that. right way. They you don't build a universe. Time. I get that. You don't build a universe by by building the universe and then building films around them. You build the universe by by building a great film first and then right. building on from that film. Sure. I get that. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't show a lot of confidence when you're like, all right, we got this well, one coming out. The, the, the next mom, one is the mummy's maybe the safest the bet of all of the properties. The mummy's the safest bet because it's it's the most recent. I think no. I think doing. I mean, they tried Dracula three years ago and it just didn't work. Yeah, but. That was supposed to be the start of this dark universe. Um, was that Dracula yeah, film? Yeah, and it was awful. I mean, but it was. I mean, but I, I think they're they're they re. I don't know. I don't know. Look, I don't know all, all the, the 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 story behind it. The whole and thing. that's the thing. They don't know the whole story. Behind but what the whole thing. they don't know everything. But they're really putting. I don't know if they changed up their fucking marketing heads or or the fucking people behind the studio. But they're just flooding the market right now with funding and promotion trying to get behind all these properties and trying to get everybody excited 
and I'm getting excited. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't help it. You know, the Dracula guy, Luke Evans, I'm on board. Keep him on board. I mean, I, I like him. I thought he was great in Beauty and the Beast, and, you know, hopefully he can still claim his role. But, you know, with the other properties in the future, I think all these actors know the potential what they have in these kind of roles. I mean, because they're more character-based monsters. I mean, these are, you know, heightened characters that have a lot of potential of showing some kind of depth. And I think every single actor here that they're hired so far has that range and has that potential to bring it. All right, man. Well, Jay, we're, we're, we're on to our last franchise here. So we're on to, we're on to MCU now. Guardians of the Galaxy marked the, well, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 marked the end of phase three for, for Marvel. And they are, Spider-Man Homecoming marks the beginning of phase four. Then we got Thor Ragnarok. After that, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Ant-Man and Wasp, Captain Marvel, and the follow-up to Avengers Infinity War. And then after that, it's question marks. Who knows? And, they're, you know, they're already... I don't even want them to announce anything for another few years. No, like, I want it to end with the Infinity War. I with, hope it does. With, the, with Infinity War sequel, I want it to end. They, I want it they, to need, end. they need a break. They need to just sit back and just revamp they do. everything. I, and, and I, just well, I, don't know, like, I don't know if they... Let everybody do. retire, sit on their fucking cash mounds of money all over their fucking houses and just kind of relax and enjoy their success because they they definitely deserve it but ten like more anything films to go. There's still yeah ten like every, more films just, to just go. like star wars you need that time i think you know we're getting a little bit saturated and there's a lot more years of what 10 more years maybe no 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 there's there's 10 more films to it's just 10 more on. films that'll probably be coming out within six years or yeah. so um that will be all out and we are going to be done i mean i'm going to be done i think you are already kind of saying that you're um, kind of tapped I, out I, a little I've, bit i've loved the mcu the time well, of I've course we all it. have but we just need some break it's, we need a vacation away from these do you remember movies. when everyone was like hey brett Favre, you should retire and he's like, nah, I'm going to keep coming back. And everyone's like, like stop hey! you're tarnishing yourself. Exactly. MCU is at, is at the top. It, 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 it should it should bow out gracefully with, with the end of Inven well Avengers yes. Infinity War Part 2. Yes. Uh, that, that's, where, that, that's where it should really end. Because I feel like anything after that, once you start losing, you know, Robert Downey Jr., once you start losing Chris Evans, uh, Chris Chris Helmsworth and stuff like that, you're, you're basically going to have to start killing the characters off. And then re either recasting them or or rebooting them in some fashion. And once you start doing that, it, your universe kind of feels a little bit disingenuous. It's not like comic books where where when your hero dies in a comic book and someone else takes up their cape or their cow or their shield or or their you know their mantle and moves forward. You know, you know that it's temporary. You know that 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 main character is going to come back. You know. Uh, Captain America's died and Bucky became Captain America in the comic books, but it was always an eventuality that Steve Rogers would return. Batman even died in, in DC and, and Dick Grayson became Batman for a while. It was always an eventuality that Bruce Wayne would return in, in the movie world though. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work because actors actually age, and 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 if they do come back, they're not going to come back in the same capacity and stuff like that. So, it feel it would feel disingenuous to to lose a main character and then move forward with someone else at, at picking up that mantle. I just feel like as the characters start dying off, i.e., contracts start ending, you really just start wrapping up your universe and you just say, you know, the next phase, we we now that we've done it, we don't need to, we don't need to do origin stories anymore there those are out there we got it we can just come back in and start rolling right away yeah yeah and reintroduce <laughs> and reintroduce everybody in more of a in more in more in line where you know it's not like the other films didn't happen but it's like we don't even really need to reference them comic books do this all the time they do soft reboots hard reboots they reboot the universe marvel has done one every single year for the past couple of years dc did the new 52 then now they've they've done away with the new 52 and and they're back to to their original universe and stuff like that and it was another reboot you know reboots happen and that's and it's okay especially when you're talking about comic book films it's just I feel like the the MCU is is getting to the point where they've run their course. Once they finish their fight with Thanos, they've yeah. done everything they can do. Yeah. Um. As as far as this 
main storyline's concerned. You're, you're going to be doing pretty much a reboot anyway because you're going to be losing all these main actors. They're all going to be going away. Now, yeah. the films that we have coming out, I am still excited for. Thor Ragnarok is coming out this year. I'm actually, I'm hopeful that's going to be the first Thor film that I actually really like. I, I'm digging the trailer for it a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think it can be really cool, but the trailer didn't sold me. I mean, they sold me in the last little bit, but that's about it. I'm, I'm still um, worried about the this whole Spider-Man Homecoming thing. The whole rumor that, yeah. like, I mean, not even rumor. Sony Sony's deal with Marvel only works for the first two films, Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man 2 uh, that, that, that Sony's doing. That's it. And we know that they get them for, for the Avengers Infinity Wars. But what happens after that? Because Sony basically ends their partnership after after their Spider Man two. I think we're good. And it's really weird. I don't need any more. No, but it, and it's really weird after that because Sony's even doing a Venom movie that doesn't take place in the Spider Man Homecoming universe because they don't want Marvel to get their hands on it. Because technically, I guess if you put Venom in that universe, he would he would then also be part of the MCU. So it's 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 really it's just really and it's all getting a little bit convoluted right now. And at some point, you just want to see them go out on top. They're the ones that revolutionized movie, you know, you know, movie universes. They're the ones that that basically Definitely. wrote the book on how to do it. And I'm not saying that as in like MCU or Dark Universe are imitating it, but they're taking that idea and they're making it their own and they're building on it. Um, that's true. But you just kind of want to see Marvel still just go out on top, and I'm not entirely sure that that's how they're going to go out. I hope they do. I mean, right now, as it stands, they're slated to do that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. hopefully they stick with that's it. That's right, because after Phase 4 is done, they don't have anything scheduled. You know, there's nothing There's nothing scheduled after that. And there's still stuff to look forward to. I'm still looking forward to the first time we get to see Captain Marvel. That's going to be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to the Ant-Man and Wasp film because I feel like that might be better than the original Ant-Man film because you can dispense with the whole origin story now and you just really get into a good story. And hopefully, when Thanos finally shows up, we get a decent villain because we've seen him so far. But he's being played by Josh Brolin. He's, he's, been, he's been the main puppet master pulling threads and stuff like that in a lot right. of these films. I really hope that we get our first really good bad guy in the MCU. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, maybe, you know, there's been positive buzz, and that's why he was cast in Deadpool, you know? So, I mean, he's going to be Cable. He's in the gym right now pumping weights. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there, you know, there's a lot of positive buzz by his performance in that. And they want to kind of keep them going in oh the superhero God. genre. We I talked about the X Men universe a couple of weeks ago. What a what a weird thing that's going. I thought they were kind of winding down the movies and going more towards TV, and here they are pumping out you know three movies next year in three different three basically three different mutant franchises going at once. You got the Deadpool, you got the you got the New Mutants, and you have and you still have the they got to chill. They, they they got to chill. Oh they they need to chill. Yeah. I don't know what their rush is, but they got to understand like okay, look, you got Deadpool. Yeah, I feel like relax. I, feel I mean, like, you have a sure fire money making movie. Fox is just on, relax and make some good movies along with. Have that. you ever heard the Have you ever heard the term like on tilt? Like a poker player is playing on tilt, which means that you know they've lost a couple hands, they've lost half their chips and stuff like that, and they're playing uh, aggressively, but it's basically false aggression. So they're just trying to to gain back their chips, trying to gain back their right. their position right. at the table, and and it's it's just like it. It's like dominoes. That's Fox. They all keep falling down, and that's what I feel like Fox is. It just all keeps falling down. Now, yeah, it's possible. Can't judge these movies until we see them. I kind of, I'm kind of digging what they got going on with the new mutants thing with the casting. So no, far. I'm digging that. I'm digging that property, but I'm, I'm just hoping that they, yeah, <laughs> they're not just making another fucking cash grab apocalypse kind of thing where it's gonna be really stupid exactly. and cheesy. And that's what I don't want to see MCU become, which is why I was getting right. to like that. Just, just end it after the Avengers: Infinity War Part Two thing that they got going on, and that's not even until like 2020. So I mean, it's. We're a ways away from that. And like I said, 10 more films to come. It's, it's it's 10 more pitfalls that they could have. It's 10 more chances they could have to start you know, tarnishing it's a lot, what they dude. have. It's it a is. Lot. Yeah. It is. And, and Star Wars has no plans after Episode 9, which I think is kind of cool. It's just like you, know, you have your anthology films. Episode 9 comes out. You have no plans after that. I, I, I like that. You know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We're still focusing on this. MCU just kind of feels like... yeah. 
you know, they got so many irons in the fire right now. It's it's kind of it, it, it gets a little daunting when you start getting into these these comic book universes because there's announcements every week and stuff like that, and things change so fast. You know, uh, this movie slid for that. No, it's not going to come out then. It's going to come out then because we we lost a director. We all that stuff. Like it's a lot. Like like look at the Flash. So. That's going to do it for Super Movie Brothers this week. Thanks a lot for listening to us. If you're enjoying the show, please go on to iTunes. Leave us a five-star review. We could really use the help. Uh, five-star reviews are how more people find the show. It's how it's how we grow. Also, make sure you follow us on Twitter, at Super Movie Pod. Be sure to follow our network, at Movie Pod Squad, on Twitter. And be sure to go to the website, www.moviepodsquad.com there you can find more of the great shows that we are a part of the network with and also you can go on there and you can support the movie pod squad network by going to the patreon page help us keep the lights on on these shows you know doing the podcast isn't free uh, we all pay for our own server space we all pay for the rss feed and stuff like that your patreon does come with you know extra packages uh chris from more gooder than is working on some stuff for, for for patrons so that way we can get you guys more involved in the shows if you love them so be sure to go to moviepodsquad.com and check out that stuff so thanks a lot for listening have a great night cheers cheers